Welcome to Opus here. I want to talk to you today out of the book of Proverbs. Uh, a lot of times people are saying, you know, I haven't been in my Bible for a while. And, uh, you know, Greg, I need to start reading again. And the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament are a great place to start. But I'll tell you something I've done off and on the last 20 years ago after uh, somebody suggested this to me, especially if you're looking for some wisdom to make some decisions in your life, is to look at the book of Proverbs. And there are 31 chapters, so most months have 30, 31 days. And just reading whatever the day of the week is. Uh, today is Wednesday, October 13th, so we're going to be hanging out in chapter 13 of Proverbs. I'm not going to be able to get through all of it in one short 14-minute program, but I'm just going to share a few verses that have spoke to me through different seasons of my life. And one of the beautiful things about God's Word and the Holy Spirit is that there could be a verse that I've read through in a chapter, like chapter 13 of Proverbs, numerous times over the past 20 years, and it doesn't speak to me. But then if in the same Bible that I was reading, I have one that I read for about seven, eight years, so it finally was worn out, and so I got another Bible. But during that time, I mean, there's 12 months in a year, and uh, I would do that quite often, reading that day of the week, chapter 13, like for instance, today, a new verse would speak to me that I've never, I'm a highlighter, I like to mark, write my Bible, and it never spoke to me. But because of the season of life that I was in, and because the Holy Spirit knew that I needed to hear that verse, it spoke to me at that time. And so I just want to encourage, I want to challenge you to spend some time in God's Word. Uh, I'm old school, I still like to hold it in my hands, but I also have a couple of Bible apps, Bible Gateway, the Version Bible app, that there's times that, you know, don't have a, my Bible handy with me and want to read some scripture and but I'm just really encouraging and challenging you. Maybe this is something new you want to start. And I would encourage you to do it in the morning. Uh, if not, maybe your mid-morning break at work or at lunchtime just to kind of get your cup filled. But I'm going to look at verse uh, chapter 13. Today's the 13th of October. And maybe this is a good place for you to start today. But chapter 13, uh, I'm going to start off with uh, verse 3 in chapter 13 of Proverbs. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. A quick retort can ruin everything. And you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, you have not mastered self-control in your life if you don't control the words that you say. And let's be honest, words can cut and they can destroy, can't they? Of course, we all know that old saying when we were kids, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. And friends, you know what? It's not true, is it? Those words do hurt. And even words as a child sometimes still ruminate back in our mind and our memory of pain and heartache when somebody said we were ugly or dumb or uh, didn't weren't smart and didn't, didn't measure up and you're not a good athlete and you're not this and you're not that. And um, I just, one of the beautiful things of being a follower of Jesus, it tells us that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus when we accept him. The old is is forgotten the past is gone and you are new and i want to encourage you with that today and i also just want to encourage you to be really wise with your words to be edifying encouraging uplifting and sometimes you do have to speak the truth but don't forget that the second part of that verse the bible says speak the truth and love people say well i'm just speaking the truth you know that's great but speak the truth in love and one of the things that I've had to grow and mature in, and maybe you can relate to this, is that sometimes I don't have a conversation with somebody and then it builds up over several months. Then when I go to finally have it with them, I do it sometimes out of anger. And then I have to go back and apologize uh, because my tone wasn't good. Or as I heard my hero Wayne Smith say one time, I don't apologize for my position, but I do apologize for my disposition. <laughs> And so uh, we just got to be wise with our words and try to control our tongue. And, you know, a lot of times the uh, kids, when they're not being good, need to be disciplined. Uh, parents put them in a timeout or grandparents put their grandchildren in a timeout. And sometimes maybe you just need to take a timeout. Or uh, as one of my mentors was telling me one time, since I'm a big basketball fan, sometimes, Greg, you just got to get a 30-second 
You know, when the basketball team, the other team's gone on a 10-0 scoring run and the crowd's going nuts and they're on the road playing somewhere, all of a sudden, you know, you hear Dick Bautau say, you need a T.O., baby! You need a T.O. And, you know, just take a 30. Take a 30. And, um, you know, the visual signal, sometimes I've even done it to myself to help trigger that thought. I just need to step back and breathe and say, you know what? It's going to be okay, and even though I'm really frustrated or been hurt again in a situation, that I want to be careful with the words that I say. Thirteen, Chapter 13, verse 4 says, Lazy people want much but get little, but those who work hard will prosper and be satisfied. And friends, it's just true. I've seen it over and over in my life, and I'm so thankful that God blessed me with a mom and dad that both had really good work ethics. And they taught me the value of hard work. I started sacking groceries at the age of 15. Actually, I think I started a paper out when I was 14. Uh, Might have been 15. I did that for a while, but uh, I got tough getting up at 4 o'clock and 4.30 in the morning. But I worked at a grocery store. I started out as a bagger at Food Town Grocery Store and worked uh, quite a bit. And I remember sometimes they would call the house. I'd be out back playing basketball with my friends and they'd want me to come into work. And uh, mom or dad always said, you know, you've got to take the call and go. And you know what? I had to sacrifice, but I'm thankful for that because I've never missed a meal. I've always had shelter. I'm, even after losing things through the flood, bankruptcy, divorce back in 2001, and I believe with all my heart, it's because of the work ethic that my parents instilled in me. And it's biblical to work. Now, we have to be careful. We can also um, work too much and become workaholics and put our identity in that. And that's something I've had to balance. Um, my type A personality, I have to confess, transferring and transitioning in the business world to when God called me into ministry in 2001. And I got ordained and been in ministry both full-time and bivocationally ever since 2001 that I had to be careful because there's always ministry to do. And one of the hardest words for me to say is uh, no or I'm sorry, I can't do that because I got a lot of people pleaser in me. Have any other people pleasers out there listening today? But I'm trying to do a better job sometimes of just learning to say, hey, that sounds like a great opportunity, but uh, can I get back with you tomorrow and just kind of give me, you know, maybe almost 24 hours to process things and to talk to God about it, to pray about it, and maybe even talk to a friend or two about it, uh, some loved ones about it, and just see, hey, what do you think about this? And b just be careful because there's a lot of good things out there, but are we going to say yes to the good things or to the God things? And s sometimes, um, you know, your, your, your no is actually uh, opening up an opportunity for a better yes. But if we don't learn to say no, and that's hard because I don't like to disappoint people, but be wise with our words, be careful with our work ethic, and also don't be lazy. Uh, you know, man, I tell you, if you want to set a great example as a follower of Jesus, be on time for work, do more than was required. If you get a 15-minute break, be back at 15 minutes. Lunch break, if you get 30 minutes or you get an hour, just take that amount. And, you know, occasionally you may have to leave early for a kid's ball game or a doctor's appointment. But I also want to encourage you to man, stay extra sometimes. And more is caught than taught. I really believe that's all my heart. Um, I saw that in my parents. Very blessed with that. And um, just parents and grandparents know your kids your grandkids they're watching aunts uncles okay your nieces and nephews they're watching and just want to encourage you to remember that more is caught than taught and you know the old saying do as i say not as i do <laughs> and that kind of stings a little bit but i just want to remind you uh, to have a good work ethic because i really i know it honors god and it also helps people to think highly because I tell you, if you're a lazy follower of Jesus, it's a bad witness. It just really, really is. And uh, just, you know, the way we leave places where we go and stay and when we borrow things, how we return things. And I believe God's a God of excellence, not a perfection, but of excellence. And so I want to encourage you uh, to really honor God and do things with excellence, be on time and not be lazy. Chapter nine of uh, chapter thirteen in Proverbs thirteen verse nine says, "The life of the godly is full of life and joy, but the sinner's light is snuffed out." 
And friends, when we honor God with our one and only life, and we make God honoring decisions, there's just a lot more peace in our life. And I know that in my life, and I know it's true for yours. And if you don't have peace in your life, you may need to look at some of the things you're doing, some of the things you're watching. And when you honor God, and you'll be light. Uh, and we get a chance, the Bible says, to be a light in the darkness. That's what Jesus was. But if you're spending time in dark areas, I think it's kind of interesting that, you know, been in bars and college and things, and, you know, they're always dark, okay? Just think about it. Uh, you know, restaurants and the bar, it's always dark. And, you know, I mean, you just have to be careful. And I want to ask you, though, what areas of your life that might be, uh, you're pushing that gray area? Um, and, you know, we all have them. And it, it's a subtle thing where we kind of slide over to sin. And I've got a couple guys in my life that, um, you know, we talk each week. And just to be honest, because Satan's good, man. He'll just kind of slowly sneak things in. Chapter 13 of Proverbs, verse 10 is where we're hanging out today. Uh, pride leads to arguments. Those who take advice are wise. You know, some really great words are simply the words, I was wrong or I need advice. A lot of times they're difficult phrases for us to say because, let's be honest, they require humility, don't they? Pride is an ingredient in every quarrel. It stirs up conflict and it divides people and Satan loves it. Humility, by contrast, it helps to heal. Humility heals. Guard against pride. I really want to encourage you. And man, it's so easy to get offended and we live in a culture that does that. Don't get offended. One of the best books I've read about not being offended is The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. We really want to encourage you to check out that book, The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. It talks about how to avoid being offended. But, you know, if you find yourself constantly arguing, uh, examine your life for pride. Uh, be open to the advice of others. Ask for help when you need it. And be willing to admit your mistakes. It's one of the things I've had to learn to do a lot, especially since I've been in ministry, because, you know, man, I let people down. And I don't want to let anybody down, but I do. And you have to go back and ask for forgiveness. And, you know, it's funny if you go on into Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13. So the easy one to remember, Proverbs 13, verse 13 says, People who despise advice will find themselves in trouble. Those who respect it will succeed. And one of the things I love to do is just call and ask people, especially in areas of my life that I want to grow in, whether it's physical fitness or my knowledge of God's word or uh, trying to do better with what finances God's entrusted me with, um, is talk to people that I really admire and respect in areas like that. Verse uh, 18 in chapter 13 of Proverbs says, if you ignore criticism, you will end in poverty and disgrace. If you accept criticism, you will be honored. Be, be, be fat. <laughs> I say that as a guy needs to lose about 25 pounds, okay? Uh, you know, be fat. And you say, wow, Greg, that's personal. Be faithful, be approachable, and be teachable. Say that again. Be fat. Be faithful, be approachable, and be teachable. You can get a lot of wisdom from people and listen. And even in criticism, there's always at least a small nugget of truth. And I've had to learn to grow in that area because I don't like to be criticized either. But there's always a nugget of wisdom in that. So unfortunately, we're out of time. But there's a lot of great nuggets in Proverbs chapter 13. The day's the 13th. I want to encourage you, start reading a day of the week, the chapter in Proverbs. I know you'll be blessed. My name's Greg Horn. We'll see you tomorrow. I hope this here.